Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a form with a subform to show related records in your Microsoft Access databases. Today's question comes from Janessa in Durham, North Carolina, one of my gold members. Janessa says, I have a business where we reimburse our employees for mileage. I've been keeping track of their miles for every day in an Excel sheet, but I know there's got to be a better way to store them in my Access employee database. Can you help me? Well, of course, Janessa, we can do this with a couple of tables, one for employees, one for mileage. We'll relate them together, create a form for each, and then I'll show you how to display the mileage inside the employee form using something called a subform. Now, before we get started, you should understand relationships, which is very important. Watch my relationships video if you haven't already. And I want you to learn how to use continuous forms. This is where you can have multiple records on the form at a time. Okay, instead of just one. So go watch each of these videos. These are free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them now and then come back. All right, go on. Go, get out of here. Go. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy from my website if you want to. You'll find a link to it down in the links section in the description below the video window. Now, in this database, I've got a customer form, and each customer can have multiple contacts. A contact is every time you talk to the customer, you want to track what was spoken about each time you have a conversation. You want to put the date and time and what was talked about. All right, so these are two related tables. They're two related forms, okay? Just like each customer has an order that can be associated, one or more orders, right? And each order has order details. Now, this right here is a subform. And if you also look, I have a separate form that I built right here, which is the customers with the contacts as a subform. So you can see I can have multiple contacts listed for each customer. We're going to do the same thing for you, Janessa, with each employee and their mileage. Now, since I already have these forms built, right, I already have the customer form, I already have the contacts form, okay, it's as easy as this. Go to design view, find out where you want to put that sub form, let's put it down here on the bottom, okay, grab the contact form, which is over here, click and drag it, and drop it, and there it goes. Now you have a subform inside of your main form. If I save this and close it and then reopen it again, look at that. I got a subform down here. Okay, that's only showing one record because I didn't make it big enough. Let's make it bigger. Design view. Make this guy bigger. See more record. There's the subform object border right there. See that? And it comes in with a little label. We'll delete that label. All right, save it, close it, open it back up again. Look at that. You can see multiple records. That's why on this other one, I had it off to the right, because you can see more records. Okay, but let's see how we can do this with your database. Before we get started, though, if you want to see exactly how I built my database, there's the blank database template, the contact template, so you can track all the contacts for each customer, and the invoicing stuff for the orders. These are all free videos. Again, they're on my website. You don't have to watch these now, but if you want to learn more about how I built that database, go watch these videos, too. You'll find links to all of these down below in the link section. All right, Janessa. So for your database, we're going to create a table to store your employees. So we'll start off with the employee ID. That'll be our auto number. And then I'll put first name and last name and all the other fields related to your employees that you want to track. You know what their address is, their phone number, their salary, whatever. It doesn't matter. For this database example, it doesn't matter. You can put all the supplemental fields in here that you want to. Save this. This will be my employee T, my employee table. Primary key defined, yes. Okay, and I cover all this in my Access Beginner 1 class if you've never built tables before. Close that up. I like to put sample data in. All right, we got Jim Kirk. We got uh, Leonard McCoy. And we got Will Riker. Those are our three employees. All right, save that. Now we've got to track mileage for each of those employees. So we need a second table. So create 
table design, mileage ID is our auto number. Now we have to know who this mileage report is for. So we need an employee ID. That'll be a number in this table. It's an auto number in a different table, okay? But auto numbers are just long integers. So this has to be a number of type long integer. We don't want this table assigning new employee IDs for each record, right? And you can only have one auto number. So that's how we know who this is. That's called the foreign key. And I cover that in the relationships video that you were supposed to watch. Did you watch it? You better. Okay. Next, I want to track the date for this mileage. Now, don't just call it date. A lot of people do this. Date is a reserved word in Access. It's a special word. Don't use the word just date. We're going to use mileage date. All right. That's going to be a date time field. And I'm going to default value that to equals date open close parentheses that's the date function and if i put that date function in the default value property down here it says hey stick the current date in there and if you use now it'll stick the current date and time in there but we just want the date and finally total miles and this will be a number again we can leave it long integer we don't we don't reimburse for fractions of a mile joe sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's enough for now. You could put whatever else you want in here. You could put in here, um, you know, notes, or if you reimburse everybody a different rate, you could put what their rate is in here, whatever. Okay, uh, this is fine for me, and all my employees get reimbursed the same. So we're going to save this now as my mileage T for mileage table. Okay, and let's go ahead and put some data in here. Now, I'm going to want to see the employees just so I can see what their numbers are, and let's open up the mileage table. I always find it's easier to build a database if you've got some sample dummy data in here first. Okay, so the first record, let's say it's Jim Kirk on, let's go 1-4, and he drove 300 miles. Okay, then Will Riker puts in a, a thing on the fourth also. He drove 250 miles. Okay, uh, Jim Kirk again on 1-5, he puts in... 1,701 miles. <laughs> Star Trek nerds will get it. And then let's say Will McCoy puts in on 1.6. He puts in 80 miles. Okay, so you can see for each employee, that's the date, and there's a the total miles. Now, I don't want to have to remember these numbers, right? So I want to be able to just type in the mileage amount and the date, right, and see that on the employee form. I don't want to have to do this going between two tables like you are right now with your Excel sheets, right? Those are not relational. So you got to put in either an employee name or an ID or it's, it's a pain. So this is why we want to build a subform for this stuff. So let's go ahead and close this and close that. And I'll start off building a simple form for my employees. Okay. Create and form design. I like to start with a splash of color, Give it a little bit of color. Go with, let's go with, uh, let's go with that for him. Okay. And I'm going to bind this to the employee table. I cover this in my blank database template and in my access beginner one class. If you don't know what I'm doing right now. Okay. Let's go to form design, add existing fields. We'll add the employee ID, first name, last name, click, drag, drop, put them right there. Okay. Close that. And we don't need to have this this tall. Make it that tall. There we go. We'll put our mileage right here. Okay. Now, save this as my employee F. That's my employee form. And it's pretty straightforward and simple, right? If I open it up, where are you? Down here. Okay. There it is. One, Jim Kirk. Two, Leonard McCoy. Three, Will Riker. Okay. No big deal. Now, to put a subform in here, the right way to do it is to build the subform first and then insert it into the parent form, like I showed you a minute ago when I was just giving you a demo. There is a subform control in the toolbox. I never use it. I don't like it. All right, it's right there, subform, and you can drop it here like that, and a little wizard starts up. I never use this wizard. You could pick an existing form. You can use existing tables and queries. It'll go through, ask you what fields you want. Nah, I, I don't like this. I'm not going to run you through it. I don't like it. I'm going to cancel that, okay, and delete this thing. Okay, if you want to just throw a quick subform together, you can actually take a table, like the mileage table, okay, 
click, drag, drop, all right? And it's gonna ask you for the relationship. Now, fortunately, the field is named the same in both tables. We have a employee ID in the employee table and an employee ID in the mileage table. And so it sees that relationship there. If your fields are named differently, this might not work or you have to define your own relationship. I know sometimes people might have like a person table and in that person table, you could have employees, customers, you know, uh, service technicians, whatever. And they're all people, but they all have different names and different tables. That's acceptable. But in this case, it's the same thing. So I'll hit next. What's the name of the subform? The wizard will create a subform for you. So like mileage F, we'll call it. And it throws it together for you. All right. And I'll just slide it down here a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, and save it, close it, and then open it. Where's my employee form? And there it is. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's, no, it's not very pretty. I don't really like it that much. So let's build our own mileage form. All right, this is why I don't like the wizard. All right, so close that. Delete that abomination that Axis just created for me. Where's the mileage form? Goodbye. Delete. All right, so let's create our own. Let's make a continuous form for the mileage. All right, so we're gonna go to create and then form design. Now, you should have watched the continuous forms video, but I'm gonna run through this real quick from scratch. All right, so let's give it a splash of color like I always like to do. Let's give it a slightly different color. Let's go with yellow. Okay, that's not bad. And let's bind this form to the mileage table. Okay, close that up. Form design, add existing fields. Now, on this one, I don't need the mileage ID. I don't care to see it. It's, it's meaningless in this case. The employee ID is necessary, but I don't need to see that field on this form. I'll need it for the relationship, but as long as it's in the table, it's under this form, it's fine. All I really want in here is the mileage date and the total miles. Click and drag, drop them there. Close that. I'm gonna turn this into a continuous form by opening up the forms properties. Finding default view and changing that to continuous forms. Now I'm going to turn on the form header and footer by right clicking here and going form header and footer, not the page header and footer, the form header and footer. Okay. I'm going to take these labels, snip them out, control X, cut them out, paste them up top here. All right. Now, since these are just labels, let me give them a little bit of color here. Make them black so we can read them. All right, since these are just labels, they're just being displayed on the screen, I can change that to date. That's only a label. And then total miles right here, we'll put a space in there. All right, those are for display purposes only. They're not field. Remember, we don't put spaces in our actual field names. Okay, slide the mileage date there. Put the total miles next to it, like this, like that. Line them up nice. Take the bottom section here, drag that up because we don't need to waste all that space. We don't need to waste all this space. And we don't really need a footer for this right now, do we? Well, we could, we could put a total down here. Maybe I'll show you how to put a total down there in a, little, in a few minutes. Okay. For now though, let's save this as my mileage F, my mileage form. Now, if I close that and open it back up again, that's what it looks like. All right. A couple little things I don't like. Let's left align both of these fields. I hate right aligning stuff. And um, let's, uh, let's get rid of that alternating background color too. So right click design view, select those two fields, format, align left. And then we're also going to open up the detail properties and get rid of that alternating background color. I don't like that. I, I, I like it on reports, but I almost never use it on forums. Save, close, let's take a peek again. Not bad. This is another one of my access pet peeves, this date picker. Notice how it just pops up right over the next field. I don't like that. I really hate that. Now you could turn it off if you want to. And in fact, I'm, I'm gonna turn it off because this is a case where I almost always am typing it in or if I'm putting in the, the, the mileage receipts for today, I want today's default date, which is that, that, that thing right there. So right click, design view, go to the properties for that and find the show date picker and turn that off, never. I wish they had an option for it to be over the field instead of over the next field. I put this in Microsoft's suggestion bin, so we'll see if they listen to me as a 
former MVP. Maybe I got a little clout. I don't know. We'll see. All right, close that. Open it back up again. All right, that looks good. Now, as you can see here, I've got everybody's mileage, all of the employees. How do I break this down and limit it to only see the employee that I want? So I'm going to put that inside of this form. All right. Well, we'll get rid of that one first of all. Okay. This is something interesting just happened. I forgot to delete that and save it the last time. So it, it automatically picked it up because the last form was named Mileage Jeff. All right. So we're just going to get this out of here for now. Delete. Goodbye. You're not supposed to be there yet. Okay. Remember, I built it a second ago, and I dragged the table in, and it made its own form. I called it mileage F. Okay, so we're going to just go with employee F. All right, here's our mileage F. And I'm going to put this guy inside of this one. Okay, how do I do that? Just like I showed you before. We're going to take it like this, click and drag, and drop it. Get rid of that little label that comes in there. All right, and we'll make this taller, like so. Come here. There we go. All right, now we don't need a lot of this space here. We don't need this. We can slide that guy over like that. Okay. Save it. Close it. Open up employee F now, and there you go. There's a nice pretty mileage form. And if I move to a different employee, you can see I've got the different records for each employee showing up there. Now, how does Access know to make that relationship? Well, like I said before, it sees that there is an employee ID, which I'm going to left align that, by the way. There's an employee ID on this form, and there's an employee ID at least in the table that this form is based on. Now, if you click on this subform, you'll see link master fields and link child fields. It, Access saw that there's an employee ID in both of those tables, the tables that, that are, you know, these forms are bound to. Okay, so it made that relationship for you. If you do this and you have different field names for the, the relational ID there, you might have to manually change this. Okay, like I said, if this, if this is called, you know, worker ID and you've got employee ID in here, you can still relate those together if it's the same bit of data. But you might have to manually make that relationship. Also, subforms can be a little tricky to work with sometimes because, all right, let me click over here. If you click on this thing once, it selects the subform control right up here. See subform, okay? These are the properties for this subform control. It's width, it's height, where it's top left corner is, all this stuff. But if you click on it a second time, now you are on the control in that subform. So now I'm on the text box for total miles. See that? Back in the old days, the oldest versions of Access, when I started working with Access, you couldn't do that. All you got was a blank white control box here. Okay, and if you wanted to edit these properties, you had to open up that form separately. But now you can actually work on these properties inside of this one. I try not to, though. I try not to play with these objects while this thing is, is in, the, you know, in its parent form. I'll close this and then come back to the mileage F if I want to make changes to this form. That's just me. That's how I grew up. That's how I was raised. <laughs> That's how I was raised by, by the access books and databases that I started with in like 1994. <laughs> okay. But I think that's the best way to do it. All right. I try not to design change this guy from inside the parent form. I've seen it cause problems before. So Janessa, there you go. There is your way to put your employees and your miles together nice and easy. And if you want to add new miles, just click on the new button. Come down here for today. Put in 500. And then you're done. Go to the next go to the next employee. Right? Click the new button. All right, one let's say this guy's on one seven. And you can put in ninety miles for him. Now, I mentioned I might show you how to put the total down here. Uh, would you guys like to see that? Like see the totals? Huh? I will be happy to show you that. But first, a word from our sponsor. And that sponsor is me. Real quick advertisement. Make sure if you haven't yet watched it, watch my Access Level 1 beginner course. It's four hours long. It teaches you everything you need to know about forms, tables, reports, all that stuff. And if you're beyond the basics in my expert lessons, I cover lots of additional stuff, including subforms, which are covered in Access Expert Level 3. One and two are mostly with relationships. Three gets into some SQL, creating subforms, form footer totals, which I'm going to show you a little bit right now. 
All right, and lots more. I got 32 different levels of expert lessons. So check them out. There's the address right there. You'll find it down below in the links section. Okay, are you ready for some bonus material? Here we go. Okay, so you want to total up the miles for each of these employees. Let's close this. Let's go to the mileage form. Like I said, I like to do my design work for this form by itself. Okay, so I'm going to add up these total miles. So I'm going to copy this text box, copy, and click on the form footer and paste it down here. Okay, now if I just save that and view it like this, it'll just show whatever record is up top because it's bound to the same field. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change it just slightly. So open up its properties. First, change its name. Let's call this sum total miles. And its control source is now going to be equals sum of total miles, just like that. Equals sum total miles. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see that better. Shift F2, boop, zoom in. That's what it looks like. Now, Axis puts the square brackets around it. You don't really need it, but Axis does it anyways. It's a field. You don't put spaces in your field names, and Axis will do this stuff for you. And the sum function, which I also cover in that Axis Expert 3 class, will add up all the total miles. All right, so hit OK. It's in the control source property. All right, maybe, uh, I don't know, give it a little bold. Let's see here, I'll bold that. And calculated values, I like to make them gray so the users know they can't edit that. Save it, close it, open up your employee form, and look at that. There's the total miles for this person right here. Add it up in your head, it seems about right. Go to the next one, same, 170. Go to the next one. Yeah, yeah, you like that? You like it? Okay. That right there alone was worth the price of admission, folks. Now, if you want to learn more about subforms, I've got a lot of free videos of my Tech Help series uh, that are on my website. They're on my YouTube channel that cover forms and subforms. For example, my vehicle maintenance database. You got vehicles and you got a maintenance history. Okay. I got a cool video on widows and orphans. That's preventing a widow or an orphan. That's basically preventing someone from putting a record in the subform without a record in the master form, the parent form. For example, here, it's possible to go to a blank record where there is no employee and try to put something in here. All right, Access will let you. And now you have a record in here that's an orphan. It doesn't have an employee ID. Look at it. If we go to the table, where is it? Where is it at? Look at that. See? Boom. It's null. All right, I'll show you how to prevent that. And, and the other way, too, how to prevent a widow. If you want to force the user to have to have a subform record, like an order with no items in it. I got a video that shows you how to put a subform inside of a continuous form, which Access tries to not let you do. But I'll show you how you can do it. I got a video on nested continuous subforms. It's a subform inside of a subform inside of a subform, and they're all continuous forms. Sounds crazy, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I got a video on invent enrollment. This one's nice. It's basically classes or like seminars you're doing and then a list of em uh, employees or students, whoever is en enrolled in it. This is a nice, simple form, sub form. Okay, this is, a, this is a good video. Watch this one. I'll put links to all of these, by the way, down below. And they're all free. You can go watch them down in the, in the section, in the, in the description, in the thing, down the thing down there. Go click on the thing. And like I said, if you really want to learn this stuff in detail, my Access Expert Level 3 class, hour and a half, covers all this stuff, subforms, linking the child and master fields, SQL and the, and the form record source, all this stuff. And for you database nerds out there like me who are into VBA developer programming and Access Developer 21, I do a lot with subforms, including nested continuous forms, side-by-side -side subforms. That's where you get two subforms next to each other. You click on this one, it synchronizes in this one. A whole lot of cool stuff in this class. If you want to learn more about subforms in the extended cut for members, I will show you how to do some extra cool stuff with a little bit of VB code, right? How to prevent duplicate dates, how to prevent duplicate entries for the same employee. You don't want the same date entered for the employee more than one time. I'll show you two different ways to do it. One's called a composite key, where we can control things like that at the table level. And another way is to do it with VB code. So I'll show you a little bit of programming. Of course, you should take my intro to VBA class first or watch the intro to VBA free video I've got. But anyways, we'll build a little data entry wizard where you click an add button. It'll pop up and say, 
give me the date for the mileage report. If it'll check to see if it's in the table already for that employee. If so, it'll say, oh, sorry, you've already entered this one. If not, it'll ask you for the mileage, right? If you type in a, an invalid number, if it's less than zero or if it's over a thousand and you guys say that requires manager approval, we'll check all those things. We'll validate the entry. If the data works out where it's valid, we'll add it to the table, refresh the list. We'll show the most current stuff up top. All right, good stuff. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases. So become a member today. Click that join button. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now. If you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.